It's an absolute delight to welcome Sonia Manzano to the studio today. For over four decades, she inspired and educated American children playing Maria on Sesame Street. Her work as both actor and writer for the Children's Television Workshop caused Latina Magazine to name her one of its 25 greatest Latino role models ever. She's in town to help celebrate the accomplishments of female leaders in the region and was most gracious in accepting our invitation to stop by. Sonia, bienvenidos. Welcome to Feel Like You Belong. Well, thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, great. So you were in TV for over four decades, working on set with people and with puppets, Muppets. Right. What's easier, working with people or working with Muppets? Well, I think uh, it's probably easier working with people, but more fun working with Muppets. Talk about After that. After so many years, uh, uh, working with them, I'm perfectly comfortable with having a man groveling at my feet because that's where the puppeteers are as they, as they hold up the puppets. Most of them are men. And when I first got cast as Maria, I was a little nervous and I kept looking down at the puppeteer and not at the puppet. And Frank Oz, who played uh, uh, Grover at that time, uh, pro finally said to me as Grover, stop looking at that man down there. And I said, oh, of course. I have to look at your eyes, and it was disconcerting because they're just ping pong balls, and uh, there's you, you think that there's no emotion in there. But after a while, their personalities are so f well drawn out mm -hmm. that you start thinking of them as live entities, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very easy to have a rapport with them, even though they cannot see you. They are looking at you on a monitor. Okay, okay, and really, you're relating to them in a very human way, which then your audience, your chil the children watching. Sure, sure. I had a very strong rapport with Oscar the Grouch, who's my favorite uh, Muppet to really? work with. Yeah, I like that he had a low voice, that he, he was nuanced, he was uh, multidimensional. Uh, I couldn't tell if he was a 44 years old or eight years old when you're talking to him. and. Uh, uh, we just kind of had a sly exchange. It's remarkable to me when I, when I see uh, old footage today because he's in a can, he's looking at me on a monitor and uh, he's reacting like this and we're talking like this. Magic, <laughs> magic of TV. Yeah, 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 and the puppeteers and the Muppets. Awesome, awesome. So when thinking back all of those decades, you caught a big break, you were you were working in, in theater. Right, it, I, right. I was on Sesame Street for 44 years, to be exact. And I was, at the time that I first got cast, I was doing a show entitled Godspell. And it was a big hit. Uh, and uh, this was the uh, late 60s, early 70s. And uh, Sesame Street needed a Latina actress. And there, frankly, there weren't very many of us. Uh, if you look back on those times, you never saw any person of color on television. When I was growing up in the 50s, I never saw anybody of color on television. And you certainly didn't see any Latin people on television. And Sesame Street wanted to show uh, America the way it was, uh, that it was diverse. And its target audience was the underserved inner city child. So they needed representatives of the children that they were trying to reach. And it actually actually uh, very accurately represents New York City. Yes, and it was very it was very New York uh, kind of environment, which I think is, uh, is uh, it's interesting to me that everybody in America, everybody in the world loves Sesame Street, though a New, a New York City street is very particular to New York City. But I've been in Idaho and I've asked kids, where's Sesame Street? And they'll say, oh, it's right back behind the cornfield over there. <laughs> So everybody uh, uh, has a sense of owning the show, and uh, that's the magic of it. Mm -hmm. So now, is it your parents or your grandparents who moved to New York from my Puerto parents, Rico? My parents came from Puerto Rico. Let me take this opportunity to say that Puerto Ricans are citizens of the United States. They're Americans. We are not immigrants. Uh, uh, Puerto Ricans were granted citizenship in 1921. It was the Jones Act because uh, after the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico became part of the United States after being part of Spain and being citizens of Spain. 
And, uh, and then there was an, a big upheaval because Puerto Ricans said, hey, look, if you, if you took us from Spain, you got to give us a, a we citizenship. We got some goodies, right? Yeah, you got to give us citizenship if, we, if you've taken away our Spanish citizenship. So then that was the, the Jones Act, and that was in 1921. But I understand why people are always unsure about Puerto Ricans because it's kind of a, you know, where it's, we come from a U.S. territory like the Philippines, and what exactly is that status? Well, there are legalities, but then there's also culture, and language is Spanish. Right, the language culture is Spanish. Culture is, is Latin. Right, right. And in answer to your question, my parents uh, uh, came here right after World War II on the, at the invitation of factory owners who went to Puerto Rico and, and uh gave out flyers that said, come to America, come to the mainland, come to America, we have work. And they would take these Pan Am flights for 44 bucks, no seats. They would, they were old paratrooper uh, planes. And uh, my parents uh, uh, got on those planes and they, they came to the, to America, to the, to the mainland, and they met here. They didn't come okay. together, they okay. met here. Yeah. Now there's a big Puerto Rican community in New York, and in fact, you said your, your whole neighborhood was well, predominantly. Well, at that time, it was uh, 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 mostly Puerto Ricans, very invisible to the dominant culture. I, I felt we lived in the, the South Bronx, amongst ourselves, we weren't in books, we weren't in uh, newspapers. Uh, as I said, not on television. The school books that I read were the Dick and Jane series, mm. these two little blonde kids Very white. living in the suburbs. I didn't know what a suburb was. Um, I didn't know where these kids lived. I wondered how come her mother, Jane's mother, stayed home when my mother went to work in a sewing factory. I wondered how, why Jane's mother, father went to work in a suit every day when mine went to work in overalls. So you were living one life and witnessing a completely different world and feeling invisible because how come I'm not reflected in this world then feeling what am I going to do when I grow up how am I going to contribute to a society that is blind to me that doesn't see me people would say what are you going to be when you grow up and you, you wouldn't know what to say because there were no teachers or doctors that were like you so what did your parents say when you said I think I want to be on the stage. Well, I didn't say that actually. I, I You're never sneaking out I, for I, auditions. I kind of no, 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 no. It didn't work exactly like that. I um. Well, we don't have all day to tell you my life story, but but when it was time for me to go to college, I didn't have a very good average, grade average, because I went from the inner city school where I was a genius to a dummy in a middle class school because they had higher standards, okay. okay? So I had to catch up. Meanwhile, I have to say once again, in the Bronx, I was a genius. Mm -hmm. When I got into the High School of Performing Arts, which is a specialized dramatic school, I couldn't keep up with these white middle class But let kids. me ask you, why did your parents say, okay, you can go to this special school? They were sort of, you know, they, you know, the te I had a teacher who thought I had something to offer and, uh, uh, you know, he just said to them, I, this is a good school. Okay. And uh, they went, okay. They I, just I, trusted. Yeah, they just trusted that, okay. the, that he was a person in authority. Mm -hmm. And uh, they assumed that the teacher was not going to put me in a bad school. It was better. I mean, the assumption was it was better than my neighborhood school. And uh, so I did go to the high school of performing arts. But then I had to catch up, I said, with my grades. So in order to go to college, I had to uh, uh, get, in, get into a school on an audition, the very same way African-American boys go to school on sports scholarships. So I did love theater, and I did love acting, and I was an artist. But it, it, I didn't have the whole gotta dance sensibility <laughs> that people think of. That's right on key, by the yes, way. Yes, <laughs> that, that people think that, that uh, that I have or that, why I ended up on television. It was sort of like, if this is the only way to get into college, this is how I'm gonna do it. Okay. The Oscars has, have recently come under criticism for being hashtag too white. This really ties into why you were brought onto Sesame Street. Why is it important for 
children and, for that matter, adults to see people who look like them in the media? Well, actually, it's, well, just for the reasons I just stated, so that you feel that you're a part of the society, so that you can contribute to that society, so that you're not dead weight. And the only way to do that is to see yourself participating in society. And I think that it's in every realm. It's not just the Oscars. It's that it comes to mind because you know, it's glamorous and you see a lot of people, but I was watching something on astronauts the other day on uh, PBS, and I was looking at all the workers behind the astronauts, and they were all white, and that wasn't television and movie stars. Mm -hmm. you c there's not one person of color that's a, that could work at NASA, I find, or women. There were no women of any color back there, too. So. Yes, the Oscars makes it more uh, obvious and in your face, but it's happening in all, 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 all uh, environments. So what's your message to casting directors and producers and executive producers? Well, I would, the power lies behind the camera. I loved acting on Sesame Street for the first eight years, and if there was Anybody having more fun than me, it was the writers and the producers. Mm. And I watched, why are they having more fun than me? And I realized it's because they're saying what to shoot. They're making the decisions. And that's why I became a, I mean, they were a very cool bunch of people and they wanted me to be a writer for the show and that's how I became a writer for, for, uh, for Sesame Street. So it's not like telling the white producer, please hire more Latins. It's that Latins and blacks have to be the producer so that they can decide, oh, I'm going to tell this story about this person that I, and, and I need really to shape the really content. Really shape the content. Yeah. It's, you're not going to, you know, have a rap session or talk to the people who make the decisions and, and do what? Convince them to see something that only you see? Right, right, right. <laughs> Well, speaking of writing, you have written a book just this just this past year. Yes. And we'll put the um, the URL for our viewers on the on the on the camera so that they can see this and and get this. What made you write this book? Because this is about your entire right, life. Right. It's it's, uh, it's called Becoming Maria: Love and Chaos in the South Bronx. Heavy on the chaos. Okay. Uh, I think that, that as my, my time at Sesame Street was ending, I thought, like, how the heck did I get on this show? And, and you know, this was so wonderful be, because of the environment that I was raised in. We were very poor. My parents struggled. They struggled with English. They struggled with uh, jobs. They struggled with making ends meet. And then mostly they struggled with each other because uh, there was domestic violence. Uh, a lot of drinking on my father's part. My mother's trying to keep the family together. We're running away, we're coming back. It was total instability. So when I think of how I ended up on Sesame Street from that crazy environment, and you know, we, as I said, we were invisible to, you know, I thought everybody acted this way. I didn't know that we were the only ones uh, in the world who lived this, totally chaotic life and I wanted to sort of examine my journey and and when you write something you you uh, you put it outside of yourself and you can analyze it or to quote Loretta Lynn the great country western singer who I just saw on American Masters on PBS and uh, and you know Loretta Lynn writes about everything that happened to her with some her husband stuff. some yeah. serious stuff and she said well, when I write a song about it, it just doesn't bother me that much. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, a lot of artists will, you know, work that way or, or that's why they write something or write a song about it or write a book about it as I did my tumultuous life to make a painting about it just doesn't bother us that much anymore. Good. So you got it all out. <laughs> I in got this. it all out there. Awesome. And it's done. <laughs> a load taken off <laughs> right, and now it's right. time to move on. So we have to wrap up in just a minute. So what is next for you? I think I'm going to keep writing and I'm going to continue to try to work on television, you know, with obviously more power than, than an actor uh, as a writer and, uh, and keep my eyes open. I 
life is one step in front of the other and one entity tells you what you're going to do next but you have to do this the whole you have to do this one step fully and that pushes you on to the next step so if i keep my eyes open and pay attention i'll be cool awesome <laughs> awesome well, i want to thank you so much for coming and joining us in, in the studio today and good luck with that next step forward thank you gracias de nada oh no that you're in this very, very vulnerable position, you were robbed. Yes, my story and my history is not different from millions of people up there and uh, my brothers. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, we were, uh, something happened and uh, the only money that we had